G'day, welcome to another episode of 3 Minute Histology. I'm Jamie Chapman, and today we're going to be looking at follicular development, which um, has a, a special name, which is known as follicular genesis, which you may or may not have heard of before. And I'm going to try to write this using my mouse. Yeah, so it's very messy. Follic, you, low, genesis. Oh, that's really awful. Okay, follicular genesis. So obviously you can see that it's taken up of two words. Folliculo, talking about the follicles. Genesis means origin. So it's the origin of the follicles. So we're going to have a very uh, brief overview of follicular genesis, just using this slide as an example. And then I'll make a few other videos looking at some of the fine histological details of those. So uh, let's get rid of that and let's start our three minutes. So the store of follicles within a woman's ovary or a girl's ovary, I suppose, immediately after she's born, uh, are a type of follicle known as the primordial follicle. These are the follicles which are stored particularly on the outer part of the cortex. So this is the uh, ovarian cortex where we find the follicles at various stages of development. And so uh, these are all uh, primordial follicles. These are the store of follicles, which um, some are stimulated to grow uh, each month and stimulated to grow and then become primary follicles. So um, primordial follicles are class, uh, classically identified as having the small round cytoplasms. You can see the nucleus here. So we'll zoom in a little bit. So here's the nucleus. Here's the cytoplasm of the oocyte. This is a primary oocyte arrested at prophase one of meiosis one. And they're surrounded by these flattened layers of follicle cells. These are simple squamous epithelium known as follicle cells. As I say, um, each month a number of these are stimulated to develop by some internal ovarian stimulus. And the first thing that happens is that these follicle cells differentiate into a cell type known as granulosa cells. And they change from this squamous shape to this more cuboidal shape, typically a simple cuboidal shape. So you can see one here. You can see the difference between these two here now. The oocyte is increased in size. So here's its nucleus. Here, so this is the cytoplasm of the oocyte. We've got our single uh, layer of granulosa cells. They continue to grow, so here's one slightly bigger, and then those um, granulosa cells continue to divide. Eventually, what will happen is that um, we'll move from this single layer of granulosa cells to one which has a double layer or more of granulosa cells. So you can see an example of that here. So this one here is known as a, a unilamina. Um, primary follicle. This one is known as a multilamina primary follicle. Unilamina means one layer of granulosa cells. Multilamina means multiple layers. You can see how big the oocyte's gotten here. Um, we'll talk about the structure of that in another video. You can see that the cells on the outside here too have changed. Again, we'll talk more about the specifics of those once we um, uh, look at the fine details. Uh, but so from then, the granulosa cells begin to secrete fluid. So if we zoom around, we can actually see some evidence of this fluid filled space. Uh, this is known as an antrum. So once the fluid filled space forms, these are known as secondary follicles. Um, they continue to grow, secrete lots and lots of this um, antral fluid. And then um, this forms this larger structure, which is known as a pre ovulatory follicle or a graphian follicle. So we move from a primordial to a primary to a multilamina primary, to a secondary follicle, and then to a large graphian follicle. So that's the broad stages of follicular genesis. And hopefully you'll be able to use some of that and then look at the more finer details in our future videos. Hooroo!